What's up, Coder Byte? Welcome back to another Data Structures and Algorithms video. I'm Elizabeth, and this is the second video I'm recording for all of you this weekend, so get excited. Yesterday's was a little short, so I figured I'll do another little short one. Why not? Uh, today, we're going to be solving a slightly harder problem than last time's problem, where we did just a vanilla cyclic sort. This week, we're going to do something slightly harder. So with all that said, let's get into this week's problem. Okay, so just in case you didn't see last, uh, the first video in this series all about cyclic sort, let's review what it is. So cyclic sort. This pattern is best used for problems in ra involving arrays containing numbers in a given range. So let's say you have an array with numbers 1 to n or 0 to n, something like that. Often this pattern is useful for determining what order the numbers should be in, if there are missing numbers, if there are duplicate numbers, that sort of thing. So let's say, uh, you know, you get an array and it has all the numbers from one to n uh, and there are duplicates, find the duplicates, that sort of thing. Using this pattern, we can do all of the above with a maximum time complexity of a big O of n. So that's a linear time complexity. So rather than doing any sort of nested loops where we're taking one element and looking at every single other element for each element, something like that, this is something that we can do linear, linearly, which basically means we're only looping over the array one time, or we might loop over it a constant amount of two times or three times, but as long as it's a constant amount, we can drop that constant. So that's why this specific algorithm is really cool and useful. So what's this week's problem? Give it an array of scrambled numbers from zero to n with one number missing. Write a function to find that missing number, uh, missing word, but whatever. Write a function to find the missing number in big O of n time without using any extra space. So again, you know, ding, 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 cyclic sort, because we have to do it in constant time without using any assisting data structures. So let's look at an example input here. We have an array with the numbers zero to four, it looks like and we are missing the number two. So we would expect our uh, output to be two here. So what's our approach? How can we use cyclic sort in order to figure this out? So for this one, we want to sort the numbers using cyclic sort. And what that will do is it will put all of the numbers that we do have in the proper place, except for one remaining number, which will be the number that is, it should have, it's, it's going to take this place of the missing number. So you'll see what I mean when we go through the example. But basically, after we sort the numbers, you'll see why, but we'll be able to find the number, the one number that is not in the right place. And where that number is in the array, its index, that will be our missing number. So let's look at an example for why this will work. So here's our input from the previous slide. We have an uh, array of uh, 0, 1, missing 2, 3, and 4. And we're looking to somehow find that the number two is what's missing. So the reason why this works is because, and here are the indices of the array up top here, just to be clear. So the reason this works is because when we look at that first number, right, we initialize our i at zero, we see that it's a four. And what would happen when we start to try and sort this? Four would need to go to the fourth index, which doesn't exist in this array. And why is that? It doesn't exist because this is an array of all the numbers from zero to n with one number missing. So that means that the length of this array is going to be one less than the spaces of all of the numbers, including the missing number that we're looking for. So when we go to sort this, we don't have the two to swap with four. It's missing from this array. So this four won't actually go anywhere. And instead, what we're gonna do is we're going to swap the rest of them, sort the rest of them, which will bubble this four into the twos place because the only swap left to make at that point would have been four with two, but we don't have the two. So four will be in twos place and we'll know we're missing two because four is there. So let's watch that happen. So we have four, we have nowhere to put it, we skip it, we iterate, we add, we increment i and we keep going. So we move our arrow, now we're in this place. So what do we have to do? We have to swap zero with four, right? Because zero needs to be in where the four, where four is taking up that spot. So let's watch that happen. We move zero and four. Oh, we have nowhere to put four again. So we iterate, we increment i. 
Um, okay, so now we're at three. What's in the three spot? One. So let's swap three and one. And now we don't have to increment i because we still have a one that's out of place, right? Because one does not equal one, the index where it's at. So we want to swap one and four, finally, right? And finally, we are left with everything is in its place except for the four, because the only swap that we could possibly make for four is if we had a two to put in its place, but we don't. And we know that it's a two missing because four ends up in this remaining index of two. So that's the approach. It's actually pretty, again, it's not that much different than last uh, problem that we just did. So yeah, let's uh, write some code for this. Okay, so as usual, I am in Visual Studio Code. It's a totally blade file. And I think I'm just gonna start by defining my function. So we have a function and this is gonna be find the missing num. And this is gonna take an array and that all looks good. So let's define some test cases. So here we have our first test case, which I'm just gonna copy and paste from the slides. So it's that same array, which is missing two. So we're gonna expect our output to be two. And then I have a few more test cases. Here's a bigger array. And this is missing seven. Here's another array. And this is missing four. And then finally, I have an interesting test case, which we didn't discuss yet. So this is actually has all of the numbers, right? So this has zero, one, two, three, four, and five, which means it's missing six, right? So that's gonna be an interesting case that we'll have to account for where there actually is no, we are able to sort the whole array. There's no number missing. So the missing number must be at the end of the array. It's obviously not before zero because this is a range of numbers from zero to N. So it has to be at the end of that range. So this is gonna be missing the number six. So we'll cover that when we get there. So I'm basically just gonna do um, kind of like we did with our cyclic sort. I'm just gonna uh, do a very similar thing with a few different, you know, uh, you know, unique things to this problem. So let's define our i. We have our i equal to zero. And let's do a while loop again, just like last time. So while i is less than the array length, Um, and, um, essentially what we want to do here is we, uh, we want to still do that if else check whether or not we should increment I or we should do the swap, right? So those are two things. We have to swap the elements or we have to increment I. So we still want to do the same thing as last time that we want to increment I if a number is already in its right place, right? So that will be easy. That's, um, let's say, um, uh, the element that we are looking at currently, let's give that a name. So let's say the const, the new spot, because remember, where whatever we get at that uh, i will be the index of the new spot where that's supposed to be going. So let's say the new spot is i. So if the new spot is equal to i, right, we want to increment. So we want to swap the elements if it's not equal to i, right? So let's just make that clear, right? So this is the increment case, and this is the swapping of the new elements, or swapping of the elements. So if it's not in its right place, if the new spot is not already equal to the index that we're on, then we want to swap the elements. When else do we want to swap the elements in this uh, problem? So we, or I guess, when else do we not want to swap the elements? So we don't want to swap the elements if whatever we're at, if the new spot is outside of the bounds of the array, meaning that it's greater than or equal to the length of the array, right? So the length of this array will be four. Four is greater than that length. So we need to make sure that both of those things, right? It's not already in its place and it's also not outside the bounds of the array. Both of those things have to be true. So for that, we can check that the new spot is less than the array length. And if it's less than the array length, we wanna swap them. If it's not less than the array, array length, AKA it's equal to or greater than, um, then we want to increment I, we wanna just leave it where it is. So that's kind of 
a difference in between this problem and the last week's problem. Um, another difference that's just to make sure you're following is that this week we don't have to do any minus one between the number and its index in this array because these numbers are from zero to n, whereas last week's numbers were from one to n. So the one had to be in the zeroth spot. So we always had to subtract one from the actual element to find the index where it was supposed to be. This week we don't have to because it's zero to n. So zero has to be in the zero spot, one has to be in the first spot, et cetera. So we don't have to do any of that minus one. So just keep that in mind, make sure you're kind of oriented and you understand the context here. Okay, so other than that, all we have to do is write this swapping code, right? So let's say the const to swap, right? Where we're, where the, what's in the spot that we're meant to be going to, that will be the array at the new spot, right? So that's what we need to swap right with whatever is at our our new spot so then we just have to swap them right so the array at the new spot is going to be equal to the array at i which is we already defined above is the new spot itself right we're putting the new spot exactly where it's meant to go and then the um array where we are r of i has to be whatever we want to swap with right so that's where the other the thing that was had to go to the new spot, that thing uh, now took the place of this two swap. So we have to put that back where we are. And that's the whole thing. So let's just return the array here and see what we get. Because we're not done yet. We still haven't done any of the logic of like, you know, uh, what's the missing number, but I want you to see what happens here. So let's look at our test cases. So let's say node code. And here we have our sorted array, right? We have our sorted array, almost totally sorted. And each of these is almost totally sorted, except you'll notice that this has a four, which is out of place. It will always be the nth number, which is out of place. So four is in the second spot. So we're missing a two here. Here we have um, six is out of place. Six is in the seventh spot. So we're missing the seven. Uh, no, that's not true, excuse me. Eight is in the wrong place. Six is in the right place. Eight is in the seventh spot, so we know we're missing the seven. Here we have another array, uh, six is in the wrong spot, so we know we're missing four here because it's in the fourth place. And finally, we have our array that is totally sorted, which means what we're missing is actually six, is at the end of the array. So how do we do that? How do we find, you know, what is that missing? Um, what is the actual missing number? So remember, we can go through this array multiple times as long as it's by a constant amount. So every single time we run this function, we're going to go through it twice or every single time we run this function, we're going to go through it three times rather than an exponentially growing amount of times. Let's say if we were to go through this array once for every element or something like that. Um, that's how you get an exponentially growing function. So we can actually go through it again. So I think what we'll do is we'll just define a for loop here because we can exit early out of a for loop once we find it. So i is less than the array length, i plus plus. And because i is actually already defined up here, and I think that this will be its own thing, but just for clarity, let's make this a j. And basically, as soon as the array at j is not equal to j itself, right, because we're expecting every element to be exactly in the same index that it's, the element is, we can return j, right, because that's the missing index. That's the index at which we have something that is out of order or not in its right place. And essentially, if we go through all of that and we never found something out of place, we just want to return the length of the array because that will be the missing number, which is at the end. So in this, this case here, we'd get a sorted array and it would, they would all be in place. And we'd want to return six, which is the length of this array because six, you know, length is not zero based index. So we can just take the length and return it. And let's see what we get. So we get two, seven, four, and six. Perfect. So we get exactly what we came for. 
Um, so again, this is not much harder than last week's problem. Um, I would say the things to watch out for are, you know, what to do with that element that has nowhere to go. And what does that actually mean to us? And then this little bit where we actually go through the array, we find what's not in its right place. And if we don't, we don't find anything that's out of place, then we know that it's the last number missing. And then we return the length. Those are the things that make this problem slightly harder. It's not just a plain basic cyclic sort, um, but this is the perfect problem to apply cyclic sort because at the end of the day, we don't use any data structures that we don't already have, which is this array that we're given. And we also only go through it two times per function call. Um, so it grows with the length of the array, which is linear time. And that's it. I hope everyone enjoyed. Well, that's it, everybody. Another relatively easy cyclic sort problem in the books. So hopefully this showed you how we can apply that regular plain basic cyclic sort to a problem and actually solve something that has like a little bit of a, a twist to it. And next week, we're going to take this and solve a much harder problem, uh, also applying cyclic sort. I hope everyone's doing well. It was very fun to video for you guys two days in a row. And uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.